गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल द एक्चुअल क्वेस्ट आई एम आंचल योर एक्चुअल मेंटोर एंड थ्रू दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू हेल्प यू डिसाइड वेदर और नॉट एक्चुअल साइंस इज फॉर यू ऑल्सो आई एम गोइंग टू आंसर फ्यू ऑफ द इनिशियल क्वेश्चन दैट एवरी स्टूडेंट एक्चुअली फेसिस वाइल्ड स्टार्टिंग विद दिस करियर सच एज वेन एंड हाउ टू स्टार्ट विद दिस which graduation courses to opt for alongside actuarial science which institute to take the membership from and many other such things is actuarial science for you to help you decide this i am going to ask you five straight questions and if the answer to these questions is a yes then you're good to go and take up this course number 1 is that you are from a finance or commerce or mathematics economics or statistics background number 2 is that you are not afraid of maths number 3 is that you can study for long hours number 4 is that you are ready to study for around 5 to 7 years that to alongside your job number 5 is that you have good logical reasoning and problem solving abilities i guess you have taken a decision but before jumping in I would suggest you to go watch my video on what an actuary is and what job does an actuary do in order to understand whether or not such kind of work interests you or not because if you don't like your work then you might prove to be bad at it once you have taken the decision you can move to the next part of the video if you are currently in school and haven't yet selected your subjects then I would recommend you to opt for subjects like mathematics economics business studies computers accounts and english language because all these subjects will help set up a base for actuarial science if you have passed your schooling stage and you would like to select the best undergraduate course to pursue alongside actuarial science then i would recommend you to take up major in economics or statistics a degree purely in mathematics might not be that suitable because you would not really see any calculus or trigonometry questions coming up in actuarial exams actuarial science is actually a mathematical application in the finance or insurance sector and therefore other subjects are better suited than maths having said that mathematics as a side subject works as a great option i did my graduation in economics honors with mathematics and english as other subjects and such a combination proved to be very helpful for me as when i was studying for my initial actuarial papers i came across many topics that i had already been studying in my graduation such as uh, probability theory um various macroeconomic concepts and uh, hypothesis testing and those parts therefore it was easier for me to understand the actuarial concepts if you are 100% sure about pursuing actuarial science then opting for bsc in actuarial science would be a great option for you as it will directly help you with actuarial papers however you should know that pursuing bsc in actuarial science might close other career doors for example you might gradually develop interest in some other career options such as a financial analyst or a risk analyst or data analyst you even might want to become a research expert it may be possible that you later on decide that you don't want to study for such a long duration maybe you're not able to clear actuarial papers for example my backup option was to pursue masters in quantitative economics but i had already started clearing a few papers in actuarial science and also i started finding it interesting also based on your graduation subjects and university you might gain exemptions with ifoa and iii for few of the initial papers if what this means is that if you have already studied the relevant subjects in your graduation then you won't really need to sit for those papers with the institutes you will just be declared pass if you graduate in actuarial based degrees from certain selected universities such as isi or iim or iits then you might gain a few exemptions note that the exemption rules might keep on changing and therefore it is important for you to confirm the same from the institute's website i will add the relevant links in the description where you can see the exemption criteria of both the institutes this brings me to the next question which institute to take the membership from ifoa or iai the syllabus and exam structure of both the institutes is nearly the same one good thing about ifoa is that the exams are comparatively easier to clear from ifoa as compared to iai 
the downside to this is that IFOA would cost you comparatively higher. The exam fees, the annual membership fees and the cost of study material with the IFOA is a lot high as compared to the IAI. But then again, you would only have to cover the expenses for first few papers while you are not working. Once you start working for an actual job, your employer will mostly cover all the expenses. However, you should also be aware of the fact that not all companies would pay for your exam fees. There are some companies in India which cover only the expenses of IAI and not IFOA. With the IFOA membership, you become eligible to work literally anywhere around the world because IFOA is more globally recognized. So if you wish to work as an actuary in some Indian insurance firm or if you don't have a huge budget or if you are extremely intelligent that the low pass rates do not really matter to you, then you can take the IAI membership. The minimum eligibility for actuarial science is class 12th. If you have passed class 12th, you can apply for the membership and start taking actuarial exams right away. To get the IAI membership, you first need to uh, clear their entrance exam which is called the ACET. Whereas in IFOA, there is no such entrance exam. You can directly take their membership and start taking actuarial papers. With IFOA, there is also an option to appear for either CS1 or CM1 exam without even taking their membership so that you can just take a paper with the institute and then you can decide whether or not you want to go ahead and take the membership with them. The exams from both the institutes are conducted twice a year. Your target should be to clear two to four papers during graduation. Don't push yourself too hard during your graduation. It is really okay to clear just a few papers and then apply for an actual job right after the graduation. All right, that was all I had to share with you in today's video. I know you still have a lot of unanswered questions and I will definitely try to answer all of those in my upcoming videos. If you found today's video helpful and for more such informative videos, please subscribe to this channel. Signing off for now, we'll be back soon.